Hello and welcome to part one of the Google Sheets travel planner demo. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the budget planner and the transaction sheet. You can find links to part two and part three in the description down below. So part two will cover the main activities and the daily schedule. And then part three will cover the packing list and the to-do list. If you want to purchase a template, you can find the link in the description down below. So for this demo, I'm going to plan a trip to Disney World. So let's start with the budget planner and the actual transactions. So right now everything is empty and these are the only things that you will customize. Everything else is automated. For each row, you're going to start by selecting a main category. So these main categories are fully customizable. If you come back to the customize here sheet and you find this table within the budget planner and transactions, Whatever you add here will be used to build the dropdown for the main category. So these are general categories and then you can get more specific in the subcategory. I like to keep similar things together. So I'm going to start by adding the hotels. So for this trip, I'm going to be staying at three different hotels. I'm going to be taking one flight. So let's fill that out. So I filled this subcategory with the name of each hotel and then I added uh, some information about my flight and then I'm going to select theme park tickets and then I'm going to add extras. So let's write that. So I added tickets for all the places I'm visiting, some extras to skip lines and then for transportation I might rent a car and then for everything else I'm going to add souvenirs, then maybe some shopping. And then I'm going to add breakfast and dinner and some snacks. So let's fill this out. So now that I have all of that filled out, that's every expense I can think of right now. Very generally, I'm going to start adding a quantity and then I'm going to start adding a unit cost. So for hotels, you can add the number of nights you will be staying and then the cost per night, or you can add just quantity one and then how much you're going to pay for the entire stay. And then as you can see, the budget is updating automatically. What it's doing is just multiplying quantity by cost. So I'm going to fill everything else out. So now that everything is filled out, as you can see, the budget now added up to this amount and everything else is empty. Then if you move on to the right, you're going to see a summary that is grouping everything by main category. So as you can see, you will only have hotels once, which is adding up these three amounts to 7,500, as you can see right here, 7,500. And then everything else right here, it's empty. I'm going to show you all about that in a moment. And then you can sort that table by any column that you want. It won't make any difference right now because it's empty. Then right here, I only have a budget and the difference, which is the entire budget because I don't have an actual amount yet. So let's see how we get the paid pending and total actual amounts filled out. So we're going to move on to the transaction section. So when you come here, you're going to find two different tables. You're going to find the fixed expenses table and you're going to find the variable expenses table. So these two tables are different and this is how I like to handle my trips and my budget and my actual transactions. But while I'm talking, you can think about different ways that you want to use this. You don't have to use it the same way and you don't have to name them the same way. So if you want to change these titles, you can go to the customize here sheet and find those labels. So you have right here the fixed expenses and variable expenses. So if you change this, it's going to automatically change everywhere else. So as you can see, what I did immediately changed this title. So the way I use this is I have what I call fixed expenses, which is things that I already know how much I'm going to be paying, even though I haven't paid them yet. So that's for this particular Disney trip, that's hotels. I know how much I'm going to be paying for the hotel stays, the flight for the theme park tickets, for any extras that I want to add, all of those expenses that I already know the exact amount for. And then what I don't know is exactly how much I'm going to be spending on my breakfast, my dinner, my snacks, souvenirs, shopping, etc. So the main difference between these two tables is that the fixed expenses table will allow you to write down an amount and then set it as pending. So this main category is automated. So whenever you select a subcategory, 
the main category will be pulled automatically. So you never have to edit this column. Now this subcategory dropdown is created with the subcategories that you added right here. So as you can see, everything I added there is creating my dropdown menu. So I'm gonna add the hotels. I'm gonna add the flight. I'm gonna add the theme park tickets. And that's pretty much it. So this is the stuff that I already know how much I'm gonna pay for. There is room if you want to add a description or some notes, and then you write here the amount. So I'm gonna fill that out. So as you can see, every time that I write an amount, this cell turns yellow, this cell turns yellow, and the amount that I entered gets added up to this total. So what's happening is that whenever an amount does not have a date paid assigned to it, it's going to be considered as pending. So if you move back to the budget planner, you're gonna see that everything is pending and this amount is exactly this amount. Now, how do we move those amounts from pending to paid? The only thing you need to do is select a date paid. So once you assign a date paid, those cells will no longer be jello and the amounts will start moving into the paid total. So as you can see, every time I add a date paid, the total paid increases and the total pending decreases. Let's leave this to a spending. And as you can see, now you have 11,700 as total paid, 11,700. And then you have 1,865 as spending. And you have that right here. And then if you add those two, you get this 13,000. 565, which is this amount right here, which is also this amount right here. And then this amount is being compared against the total budget and this is how much money you have left. What happens with this variable expenses table? Anything that you add here will be automatically considered as paid and whatever you enter will be added into this column. So right here we have 11,700 that amount is going to start changing as soon as I add transactions to the variable expenses table. So let's say that we are already on our trip. So we're going to start adding, maybe we had breakfast and then we got a souvenir. If you want, you can add a date to those payments. Our first full day. So we did all of this. You have room for a description if you want to write down where you had that meal, let's say. And then maybe we paid $100, and then we paid $10. And then all of that adds up to $255. And as you can see in the budget planner, that amount is now added to the total paid from this table, from this fixed expenses table. So I had 11,700, and then I have to add this 255. So if we select both amounts, we see the total of 11,955, which is the same amount we see here. Every transaction is added to the corresponding subcategory. Now these subcategories in the budget planner, they have to be unique, but once you create transactions, you can repeat subcategories as many times as you want and every transaction will be added up to the corresponding subcategory. So let's say I'm gonna add breakfast three times. So let's do $10 each time. And now we have $100 right here and then $30 right here. So if we move to the budget planner and we find the breakfast row, we have those $130 all added up into the breakfast row. And then if I add the breakfast row again, it's gonna highlight because in the budget planner, subcategories are supposed to be unique. And as you notice, whenever something is not matching because something's wrong, you did something that you weren't supposed to do and something's not matching, it's gonna go crazy here, it's gonna turn red and it's gonna let you know that there is an error in the sheet. So rule number one, there must not be duplicates here. So let's delete that. And then rule number two, every single transaction must have a subcategory assigned to it, a valid subcategory. So for you to select a subcategory here, it has to exist here. Then rule number three, you have to assign a main category to each subcategory. So if you don't do that, then it's gonna turn red. It's gonna turn red right here. It might not affect the total amounts, but it will 
not be working the way that it should. So instead of seeing a main category here, you're going to see a blank space that represents this row right here. So just make sure that you always select a main category, that you always select a subcategory, that subcategories are unique within the budget planner, and then that you are always selecting a valid subcategory in the transaction sheet. Now, the only things that you have to add are the subcategory and the amount. And then whenever you want to mark something as paid within the fixed expenses table, you have to add a date paid. And then in the variable expenses table, the only thing you need to add is the subcategory and the amount and everything else is optional. So I'm gonna show you what all of those other things are. You have space for a description, then you have a due date. So in case you are maybe paying for your hotel, in two different payments. So let's say you are doing $2,000 and then you're doing the rest. You can split those payments and then you can add a due date for each. So maybe you need to pay for this in September and then you need to pay for this in December. So if you want to maybe assign different tags to each of your transactions to identify them in some way, you can just select them from the drop down. So the way you create this drop down is by going to the customize here sheet and entering all of your tags in this section. And then that's useful because let's add some tags to everything and I'll show you what happens. So the tags are useful because if you scroll all the way to the right, you're going to find these two tables and these two tables are pulling every transaction for the fixed expenses and every transaction for the variable expenses that have a tag assigned to it. And then they are sorting them just to keep the same tags together. So this is just a different way of viewing your table, your fixed expenses table. It's only going to add things that have a tag assigned to it. It's gonna group them together. So you can see that you need to call to confirm to these three places. And then if you want to jump into the actual transaction, you can just click on this link and then you immediately jumped into that section. So if I start adding a tag here, added tags to two transactions, and if I move to the variable expenses tags, I can see those two transactions. And again, I can use these links to jump into the transaction. If you want to quickly jump into the tag table, you can just click here, and you're gonna jump into the tag section. Then you can select the payment methods. Your payment methods are also fully customizable and you do that in this section. And then this section will create your drop downs and you can select different payment methods. So you can select different credit cards, maybe cash, and then you can select your different payment methods. So you get your breakdown by payment method that is joining every single transaction from both tables. So this total paid is taking information from both tables. And then the total pending is only taking information from this one table. You can see the total paid on this graph, the total pending, and you get a payment method breakdown graph for total paid plus total pending. And then you have your tax table. And then if you wanna jump into the payment method breakdown, you can just click on this label right here and you're going to automatically jump there. So this is just a summary and it's useful to see that everything matches. So you get your total budget, which is this amount. You get your total actual, which is this amount. And then you get the difference. And then you get the total actual for the transactions. And then those transactions, you get the breakdown. So you have how much of the paid total is coming from the fixed expenses. So from this table, which is this amount, and then how much is coming from the variable expenses, which is this other table, which is this amount. And then you have both of those added up, which is this amount. And then you get the pending amount, which ju is just coming from the fixed expenses table. And then as I mentioned, you get your summary. And now that it's been filled out, you can actually sort it by any column that you want in ascending or descending order. And then you get a graph showing you a breakdown of the paid plus pending total, which is the total actual, you have a breakdown right here. And then you have a comparison between the budget, the total budget and the total actual. So that's it for the budget and transactions. So these two sheets work together and they are customized using the budget planner and transactions section in the customize here sheet. 
If you find a label that you want to change, you can change it on these white cells where, where it says your translation. So you can either change that and name it differently, or you can actually change it to a different language. And then these three customize your drop downs. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If you don't have the template yet, you can find a link to purchase it on the description down below. And if you want to watch the other parts of the video demo, you can find links to those in the description down below as well. If you have any questions, please contact me and I'll be happy to help you. Thank you for watching.